Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2023 Honda CRV. Adding a hitch to your CRV is a great way to really make the vehicle do whatever life throws at you, whether it be a bike rack, cargo carriers for vacation, or even a ball mount to move some trailers. Now, this is what your hitch is gonna look like when it's installed on your CRV, and it's a really nice look because it's a hidden cross tube, meaning the only thing that you're gonna see visible is gonna be the two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Now that's gonna be really nice because that's pretty much the standard size that you see a lot of accessories come in. Um, so you're gonna have plenty of options when it comes to bike racks, cargo carriers, or ball mounts, but they're all gonna stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip. Now this is not included with the hitch. A lot of times when you pick up your accessories, they'll have one included. But if you wanna pick up a locking version of the pin and clip, that way you can leave your accessories in place, not have to worry about anyone walking away with them. You can find those here at eTrailer. Rolled style safety chain loop is nice and open, so when hooking up to a trailer, your standard S hook will go on there no problem. Even larger clevis style will work as well. Now, speaking of towing, you are gonna want to adhere to the weight capacities of the hitch, and this one has some pretty good numbers. As far as gross trailer weight rating, it's coming in at 3,500 pounds, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. And tongue weight's actually pretty solid here at 525 pounds. And that's gonna be the supported weight of anything that's kind of freestanding, which will be your bike racks and cargo carriers. So with that weight capacity, you're gonna be able to get a four bike bike rack loaded up, cargo carrier on vacation, no problem. Now, it is important if you are planning on towing that you check what the vehicle can tow as well as any of the components that you'll be adding to it and take the lowest of those numbers. That way you stay safe while hauling. Now the profile of this hitch is really nice because the opening is pretty well close to flush with the rear fascia, but measuring from our center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point is gonna be two and a half inches. And that's gonna be important with your folding accessories like cargo carrier bike racks and the stowed position. Sometimes they can make contact with the rear fascia. This one I don't worry too much about, so you should be okay there. Just keep in mind with those folded up, you're probably not gonna be able to open up your hatch. Now, ground clearance is important for when choosing a ball mount because you want it to have a level trailer and this one coming in at 14 inches means that you can measure the coupler of your trailer, compare it with that and determine that rise or drop necessary. Now, as far as installation goes, this one is pretty easy. You can definitely do this in your driveway or garage. You will need to lower down the exhaust just on the rear portion, which isn't terribly hard to do. And there's gonna be some trimming on a panel as well as a little bit on the rear fascia just to make clearance for the hitch. Uh, feeding up the hardware, super easy. And you could probably knock this out in anywhere from about 45 minutes to an hour. I do recommend having an extra set of hands to get that hitch up in place, but I'm gonna walk you through all the steps to make sure you get your hitch installed, so. Let's take a look at it. To get our hitch installed, we do need to lower down our exhaust. And it's pretty easy to do that with the exhaust isolators, but once we remove them, that exhaust is gonna to wanna to hang down. And the next hanger is pretty far up. So that can put a lot of stress uh, just having that unsupported weight. So we do need to find a way to support our exhaust when we lower it down. I'm using a cam buckle strap since we're on a lift and chances are you're doing this in your driveway or in your garage. You can use a box, a block of wood, whatever it may be. You just don't want this hanging down. Just kind of put something here to support it. So if you do have a cam buckle strap, that also works really well. I'm gonna just use our rear suspension arms and just kind of create a cradle for our exhaust. To get to our isolators, there's gonna be a total of three. One on each muffler kind of up front here. And then as we go back uh, right in front of the rear cross member kind of by this uh, arm, we're gonna be popping those off. And Normally these aren't too bad to get off. If they're fighting you though, sometimes that rubber kind of seizes up on that metal. A little soapy water solution is a great way to kind of lubricate that. It makes it a lot easier to not only take them off, but put them back on later. So you can just put some dish soap and water, spray those down. And then I'm using a pry bar. Uh, if you don't have a pry bar, not to worry. You can use a long fillet or a flathead screwdriver and pretty easy. This portion that's welded onto the muffler is a great little fulcrum point to be able to pry this off. So just kind of peel this back until we get these popped off the stud. Um, now you can remove the bottom or the top. It really doesn't matter. Um, just as long as we get our isolator taken off here. And if it's close to the edge, uh, sometimes you can kind of move the muffler a little bit just to kind of get that just little extra to get those to slip off. Yeah. 
Now on this one, you can use the hanger arm to kind of pry on this one. Now this one is a little bit, it's wider uh, and it's a longer section. So again, if you need to, you can pop off the top one. It doesn't matter as long as you get it removed. So with all of them removed, you can see our exhaust is resting on here. Uh, cam buckle strap is nice because I can kind of just slowly lower this down and it's still going to support it. But this is going to give us the clearance to be able to get to uh, our holes in the frame. So now we need to remove this center underbody panel. Um, now we are going to be eventually trimming for clearance of our hitch, but for now we just need to get this removed. Uh, we have plastic push pins. So we have one, two, three, four, and these are pretty easy to remove. If you have a flathead screwdriver, a smaller bit uh, end kind of helps a little bit. You just kind of wedge it in there, give it a quick twist. That center section should pop out. And then from there, normally you can just kind of pull these out. Keep these handy because we're going to need them for reinstallation later. Now there's also going to be two 10 millimeter nuts that are back here. So with our 10 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and get those removed and then get our panel removed. Now taking focus at our frame of the vehicle, we're gonna get our hardware in place. And it uses a fish wire technique that might be a little worrisome at first, but I'm here to tell you it's pretty easy to do. And essentially all we're doing is getting our carriage bolt and our spacer block into these two holes. So what we'll do is take our fish wire, unravel it, and with the coiled end, feed that through the small hole and go to this access hole here. And what I'm gonna do is at the end, I just put a small bend here, that way it doesn't pull through, but also that kind of helps when you feed this through the hitch to kind of keep that in place. At this point, take your spacer block. And then we have our carriage bolt that we're just gonna thread onto this coiled section. And then we'll just feed this in and that should drop down. Now keep your fish wire on. This helps when we raise the hitch in place. That way this doesn't go back in the frame rail. This kind of keeps it in place. So uh, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and get this one in place as well. Uh, just check our clearance here. So carriage bolt passes through. So that's gonna make it nice and easy for this one to go in place. Now with those two in place, we'll just repeat on the other side. Now before we raise our hitch in place, we do need to trim out a small portion of the fascia, just to kind of make clearance. Uh, the hitch will sit kind of up tucked here, but as the receiver's kind of resting here, this kind of has to get notched out. Now in the instruction manuals, there's measurements, and one of them I was looking for the reference point, um, and they kind of have it uh, to where it's, it's in black and white if you have the paper instructions. So what I'm gonna do is just use this as our center point and those same measurements. So with a tape measure, go ahead, you can measure that out based on the instructions. I'm gonna use painter's tape. It's a great way to make sure that you have clean lines and it makes it nice and easy to follow. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this trimmed out. I'm gonna be using an oscillating tool uh, or a multi-tool as some people call it. And this is gonna give us those nice clean lines. You can use a pair of snips, you can use a Dremel, whatever you have handy. Now something I do recommend, some trims will have uh, the, the lift gate where you can access that with your foot. So if you do have that kick panel sensor, check to make sure there's no electrical connections. We do not, so uh, we'll go ahead and get this cut out. Now's a good time. You can take a file or even just kind of the backside of a, a knife. It's just kind of run along, get these burrs knocked off. This is going to be kind of the finishing touch or what you'll see on the vehicle. So spend a little extra time to make sure this looks clean. Now, hopefully you kept your cutting device close by because we're also going to be cutting our underbody panel. Now you can choose to not put this back on. That's completely up to you, but it's not a whole lot of trimming required. And 
what I'm gonna do just to make sure that it's nice and even with what we previously cut on the fascia, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of mock this up, just kind of slide this in place as it would go back. And this is gonna be a little bit wider that we're cutting and that's just to account for where the plates are welded on. Um, so what I'm gonna do is check all these mounting points, center it up. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna mark out exactly where we cut from the other ones. And as I mentioned, it is gonna be a little bit wider, but this is gonna make sure that it's gonna center up. <laughs> So now I have an extra set of hands. I have Ethan helping me. We're gonna raise this hitch in place, have a serrated flange nut ready to go. That way when we can get this hand threaded on each side, it'll support the hitch, making the rest of the install quite a bit easier. So we'll take our fish wires, and this is where that bend comes in place, because as you feed that through, it's gonna kind of hold these in. So feed those through the corresponding holes. And then as we kind of raise this up over the mufflers, We'll get to a point where we'll need to kind of peel back the fascia a little bit as this is gonna slide in there. Now there is a bracket that can get in the way a little bit. So just kind of hold this back. And then once it kind of goes up, you're just gonna make sure that you have your carriage bolts feeding through and you can pull off your fish wire and try to hold that in place. Sometimes it can get tricky. It's gonna to wanna to go back up in the frame rail a little trick that I use, uh, you can take your pull wire and just kind of wrap it around the threads if you need to. And that's going to hold that in place for me to get a few threads started. And once started on each side, we'll just go ahead and get the remaining serrated flange nuts in place. So with all of our flange nuts in place, we'll then go ahead, grab our large carriage bolt, our spacer plate, and the large serrated flange nut. And this is just gonna feed in from driver's side to the passenger side. Make sure that that's seated. You'll then take your plate, and this is just gonna kind of sit here on our tow hook. And then we'll get this hand tightened. So now we'll go with an 11 16 socket. We're gonna tighten down those four bolts that are in the frame rail. You don't have to get too crazy here. Uh, we're gonna come back with a torque wrench to make sure that they're properly torqued down. But this is gonna save us a little bit of time of uh, you know, having to use a torque wrench. Now for the carriage bolt that's on our tow hook, this is gonna be a three quarter inch socket. So now we have our torque wrench. We're gonna go through and torque these all down to the torque settings found in the instruction manual. Now, this is gonna be important. It's gonna make sure that for the lifespan of the hitch, it's gonna be tight enough, um, but also not too tight, putting stress on the hardware. If you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at eTrailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. So keep in mind that these four will have the same torque setting, but as we go to our larger one, we are gonna to need to bump that up. So just take a look at the instructions and we'll get these all torqued down. So with everything torqued down, we officially have our hitch installed, but we do need to put our panel back in place. And this is a good time to really check to make sure that you don't have to trim it any extra, but uh, we'll get this in place. We'll also raise our exhaust back up, get our isolators on, and then all that's left to do is load up your accessories and hit the road. And that was a look at installation of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2023 Honda CRV.